And it looks like it is starting to work. We'll put everything else we collected in there. And this farm is actually really, really efficient and quick as long as it's... Hey guys, welcome back to iCraft MC. In this episode, we're going to be showing how to make an automatic pumpkin and melon farm. But before we do that, we're going to make the banner for the episode. Today's banner starts with a light blue banner and orange dye. The orange dye is going to be in the orange base gradient, which is this gradient right here. Then we're going to go on to the orange rondel, which is this shape right here. Then we're going to go on to the red base indented, which I think is this shape right here. Yeah, it is. All right. Then we're going to go on to the red base sinister canton, which I believe is this shape right here. And we're going to end off with two other shapes, the orange base indented which again is this shape right here and the uh, orange base sinister canton which is this shape right here and you can see what it makes it makes a scene of the mesa biome i thought that was a really really cool banner because the mesa biome is a cool banner that we used to do more with since we used to live closer to it but it's still overall a really really nice banner so we'll just put that up here and we can yeah, so here's a cool panoramic view of the mesa biome anyway on our next list of course we're gonna get all the supplies ready for that so we'll just take a look at what we need right here. I have it both in these shulker boxes, uh, right here and right here. And, uh, oh, the doorbell. Someone's at the door. Oh, hey, Jonas Marriott. I haven't seen you for a long time. Looks like you're happy to see me, too. Yeah, I'm um, awesome. Well, it's great to see you. Um, yeah, it's nice to see you, too. No, it's really cool. I'm great to have you pop over. Oh, you have a book for me? Okay. Hey, iCraft MC. I've been doing a lot of work at my house, and I want you to come over and visit as soon as you have time to. Signed, Jonas Merritt. Well, thanks a lot, Jonas. It'd be awesome to come over. Uh, hopefully, I can come over there as soon as I can. I probably can't come over today since, of course, I'm showing our viewers how to make a pumpkin and melon farm, but I can totally come over uh, later, and I'll see you then. Awesome. That was great to see you, Jonas Marriott there. But uh, anyway, on to what we're doing for today. So for today, we're making an automatic pumpkin and melon farm. Now for that, we're going to need certain things, so we'll look at that right now. We're going to need everything here. Now, of course, you can always scale this down, but this is what you're going to want for a good scale farm. So I'll just look at this for a bit. Um, it's exactly in these numbers. Uh, these are, yeah, I think these are the exact numbers you're going to need. So there's all this. Um, this actually can be any building block. It doesn't just have to be stripped spruce logs. That can be any building block as long as it's not transparent. And you might not need exactly this many. I think you just need four stone slabs and just some rails. And then you need all this, so you need um, pumpkin and melon seeds. Uh, you need three stacks of seeds uh, that are either pumpkin or melon. So I'm doing half and half because I want both. But of course you could just do one or the other um, or a mix of whatever percentage you want. Uh, we need four buckets of water, um, some glowstone, about two stacks, a bunch of rails. Now if you want to know how in the world am I going to get this many rails, I actually have a rail tutorial and uh, I'll link that in the description. So that's a really good one. Uh, you need this for a storage system, this for the collection system, and any old hoe. It doesn't actually matter what kind of hoe it is. It just needs to be one that you can till a lot of ground with. And you'll need this for the mechanisms and all that. So this is these, these are all the supplies uh, you'll need for this farm. And, you know, it's a really, really good one. This one basically will keep running and running and running as long as it's within loaded chunks. So I think within about 120 blocks, since obviously the entities have to load for that. Uh, between episodes, I actually made this cool brick wall here to kind of separate off my garden area uh, from the rest of my area, which I think is cool. I also got rid of the chorus fruits, but I will put them back somewhere else eventually, uh, because eventually I want to have a road going through probably here or possibly over here to connect uh, where my house is to over here. So I'm thinking where I want to build the house, not the house, the uh, the farm it is right up here uh, past all this uh, next to my other farms. Uh, so right over here. Um, this is about the space you're going to need for this, is this space right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the pattern for what you're going to want to do, and then I will show a time lapse of myself building up the entire thing, since this is somewhat sizable. So we'll go over here and get our supplies out. So you're going to want to get out all your powered rails, uh, your normal rails, and these blocks of redstone. And you can get out the sticky piston, torches, repeaters, comparators, uh, fence gates, minecarts with hoppers, and also the storing system stuff here. So we're going to start actually with the bottom, which is interesting. We usually start, of course, with not the storage system. So we're going to start by making the collection area. Now this will be split into two, and we'll kind of go over to here. So this farm is going to be 18 by 18, and this edge is going to have some glowstone on it. So we're not going to have anything here. So it's going to be from here. So let's see if we count this over, see if we've done the right size. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Perfect. 
and actually we'll probably go over one more this way. I just realized that because there's going to be glowstone all along the edges. That's to basically give light to the pumpkins and melons, or they will grow, but they will grow really, really, really slowly, unless we have a good amount of light there, which is obviously super important for that. So we're just going to break this, put that there, and break this and put that there. So that should be good. You want probably a 20 by 20 block space all dug out. And uh, yeah, so we're going to have that. We're going to split this in two. So we're going to have two uh, nine block wide sections. So we can just kind of count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this works uh, well. And obviously the rails aren't going to be exactly like this. What we're going to do is we're going to actually start by going in the middle here. So again, counting out probably nine blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you're all about symmetry, you can always go um, like this if you want. It doesn't really matter exactly, but you want things kind of in the middle here so that they can power all of the powered rails to pick up all the blocks. Now, did I do that wrong? I did, that'll be kind of annoying. So I will go like this and like this, and we can just basically break this like this until we've done 18 blocks, and we can kind of just count that out. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's one half, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's funny, I never remember this, but redstone blocks really do look quite cool. They have such a fluorescent, powerful red to them. It's quite a nice color. So anyway, now we're going to do is we're going to put rails all along here and back. So we all have these long rails going like this, and I'll just show how they connect up a little bit and then I'll do the rest in a time lapse. So we're basically gonna have the rails go like this in a big uh, cart loop. And now once they touch this, you can see they're all getting powered up like that. And we're gonna kind of split this in half. So, all right, so here we are at the finished rails. Now, basically what we're gonna see is we're gonna see if we got this in the correct pattern. You can see the pattern that there is. Now we're gonna put both these on and see how they go. We're gonna see if they do go correctly, they should come right back here to me. This will basically be a loop in which they go all around the system grabbing all the pumpkins and all the melons and they come right back to deliver them to a hopper unloading system. So let's see if it goes correctly. Now of course this area over here is a bit complicated and I'll explain how to do this in a minute because if you don't do it correctly it'll mess up. But it does seem like this has gone around correctly uh, to the end which is perfect. So we'll just grab these and recraft them back into how they need to go. And then I'll go about explaining how to make this over here. So basically how this works is we have these two rail line systems that go back and forth here. This one goes one rail less out than the other side does, so we have room to put this in. But the whole size of this thing, other than these little bumps out here, is 18 by 18. And we're basically having two systems that grabs all the pumpkins and melons in time, so we don't have anything despawning. So the way we build this little bit here so that works correctly, and I'll just break this a little bit to demonstrate this. Now of course you would think, oh, we can, you know, just grab the rails and make them go like this, you know, and then connect that up. But if we go like this, these will actually connect to each other and it's really hard to have them not connect to each other. But it's actually impossible. So what we're gonna do is like this, we're going around like this, like this and like this. So that'll go back there like that for that one. And for this one over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this and go up like this over here. We're gonna grab a powered rail. Now that doesn't work. You can see, again, this is a little bit complicated. Yeah, so we'll just put this here. And if it connects up like that, what you can do is you can place it like this, and then you can place this like that. And again, if it connects up again, what you can do, you can grab powered rails and go along like that. It'll connect a bit weird. You can kind of fix it around like this. And if you're still having issues uh, like I am, what you can do is go around like this, like this, go like this, and that'll work. Break this one back here and connect this up like that. So there we go. That's how you do that part. And now we're going to make the system over here that collects everything. So we're going to make a small area over here dug out. Of course, we can fix this later on. And we're going to make two systems that are parallel to each other. That'll basically do the whole system. So All right, now we're almost done with the rail part. We just want to put a redstone torch here and here. We also want to get ourselves some hoppers and put three hoppers going into this block. So one, two, three, like this. And this hopper is going to go into this hopper. And two more going into here. So they all funnel into here. Then we're going to get two pieces of powered rail and put them there and there. Then we're going to get ourselves these, uh, actually one more powered rail here and one more there. Then we're going to get some stripped uh, spruce logs or actually whatever type of log you want to use and put them there and there. And we want to grab ourselves these detector rails, these two detector rails, and this will be part of the redstone. Put it like this and like this. Then break these. But So these are still suspended kind of at that weird angle. And they're going to grab these redstone comparators and put them here and here. Get these redstone torches, put them here and here. Uh, get two more building blocks, put them on top of there and on top of there. Get ourselves these two repeaters and put them here and here. 
and get ourselves these redstone blocks and these sticky pistons. Put the two sticky pistons on there, put the two redstone blocks there, and finish off by putting these two uh, dark oak fence gates here and here. And we're going to test out to see if this thing works. So we're going to put this here, put in a small amount of blocks, and we'll push it in and see what happens. And you can see the blocks funnel out, and then once the blocks are done funneling out, then it pushes it and it goes back into the system. And so basically what this will happen is this will go through all these blocks here, getting all the pumpkins and melons that are in the farm, and go back and funnel them out. Now of course we'll just test the other one to make sure that one works as well, but I'm sure it will. So I'll we'll just put in a couple blocks here. Perfect, this is totally working. So the only thing we have left for the collection system is to go back here and actually have that one last hopper go somewhere, which is quite an easy thing to do. So we're just going to go over here and you can see the last hopper her funnels into this hopper right here, which funnels into there. What we can actually do is we can grab this hopper here and we can grab a block, put it there and then go down one and make sure this hopper goes out like this. So they all funnel into here, which goes into here. And then from there, we can just make a sorting system right off that, and not even the complicated one. We don't even have to really sort this into pumpkins and melons, although you could if you wanted, but I don't think that's necessary. And so what we're going to do is basically mine down here a whole bunch on these six blocks, go down a little bit, and uh, yeah, I'll be right back once I've done that. All right, there we go. So the entire sorting system is done, and anything we get will funnel down into these chests. I put up some torches and also this ladder here because obviously we want good access and no mobs to be in here at night. So this should be a really good system to collect all of our pumpkins and melons. And you can see that, that it totally works and basically these carts will just go around and around. Now if the cart goes into the system without anything to give, it'll just go like this and go right back in. So it totally works in all systems. And I would have these be running through the rest of the tutorial, but they sound super annoying. So we won't put them in until later. So now we're on to the next step. And thankfully that step is super, super simple. So we're just going to throw away a bunch of items we don't need. Well, not throw away, but just store like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of this dirt. So I'm going to place down all the dirt on top of these rails. Now, of course, again, you place the rails first, because if you don't place the rails first, you have no idea where in the world anything goes. And this should be about 18 blocks over. Let's see. Do I have um, 18 plus 46 should be 64. So that's good. And I'll basically build this in a time lapse and I'll be right back once that's done. Okay, so we now have all the dirt down. Now for the next step, which is basically to prepare this dirt for planting. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get out our hoe and our water buckets, as well as these 18 stone brick slabs, although we actually only need four stone brick slabs. What we're going to do is we're going to go to one of the edges here. We're going to uh, count in four. So one, two, three, four. And on this fifth block here, we're going to put in a slab facing this way like this. And we're going to go over here and do the same thing. So one, two, three, four. And then here, put a slab like that on the bottom. These are going to be waterlogged slabs so that we can have the water without having the rails being messed up. It's a really good system. So we're like this. And we'll do the last one like this. One, oh, one, two. And then it looks like we ran out, but uh, we can count it. Three, four, and then five here um, is the fifth. It looks like I broke a rail down there. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I want to do the rails first. It's because it's extremely annoying to work with them once the dirt's down. So we'll go back here and fix that up like that. And uh, there we go. So we'll get rid of these. And basically, we can also count, make sure this is the right distance in between. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it is. So basically, we're going to have water in each one of these. So we'll put the water in there like this. And this is just going to be how we uh, hydrate the crops and, of course, have them grow faster that way. They technically don't need to be hydrated, but if they're not hydrated, then they're extremely uh, slower growing. And, of course, we don't want that, so I'll go like this and like this, and we can put the water in like this. And there we go. So we have all of our water there hydrating the land, which is perfect. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, till the land with our hose. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw away everything we don't need in here. And we're going to grab ourselves out the hoe, uh, which I have right here. And we're going to basically do this in a checkerboard shape. 
uh, it doesn't really matter where you start the checkerboard you could start it like this you could start it the other way um, actually that was that one's wrong but you could start any way you want it just has to be a uh, perfect checkerboard like this it's probably better if this one is not a growing space so if you do it like this and it's aligned up with these and you can see by this that it does align up with these uh, it doesn't really matter so anyway we'll we'll do all these in a checkerboard and i'll be right back once i've done that Alright, so we fully checkerboarded this, which is super awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and plant our fields. So we have all of our pumpkin melon seeds here. And of course, we're going to plant this on all of the uh, ones here. It doesn't really matter how you plant them, um, but actually it does matter a little bit. So what you can basically do, the best way of planting them is to plant it one row with pumpkin, one row of melon. So it actually does matter. Um, basically why is because the way Minecraft works is if you have similar plants next to each other, uh, they'll actually grow faster than if it's all the same. So like if you have, let's say, pumpkins and melons next to each other, instead of just pumpkins or just melons, and they'll grow uh, faster because there's more variety. So we can go like one row here, that's all the pumpkin or all the melon like this. And then we can have one row here, that's all the pumpkin like this. So we can go like that, one row pumpkin, one row melon, and I'll do all that and be right back. Alright, so we've now planted all of our pumpkins and melons. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to grab ourselves our observers. Now these are super important because this is what makes this farm be automatic. So what we're going to do is you can see the little hitbox there of our plant. We're going to place an observer there and you can see the observer is now looking at it with its face. What we're going to basically do is right click on every single one of these from the top making sure that they're all looking down at the plants and make another patchwork of the observers looking down at the plants so i'll be right back once i've done that yeah just make sure every observer is facing down and these observers are looking at the plants not at the dirt One other thing you're going to want to do before you completely fill this in with these observers is grab yourself a piece of glowstone. I mean, you can do this after you've done the observers, but it's just easier to do it before. And over top, actually, every piece of water, so you can actually right click on the water, you're going to want to put a piece of glowstone on the stone. Now, what this is going to do, this is not going to ruin the water's effect, but it's actually just going to give these crops light and help them to grow. Because if they don't have light, they're going to grow very, very slowly or not grow at all which is of course not what you want. We're gonna put the rest of our glowstone around here uh, later. Awesome, so we now have our pumpkin and melon stems planted. We even have a melon that's already grown. We have our lights there to give it uh, growing. We, we also have all these observers that are all watching the pumpkin stems. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab all of these netherrack here. This can actually be any block, not nether, just netherrack. It can be literally any building block. And all these note blocks. These do have to be note blocks, that's really important. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get back on top of here and we're going to finish up the rest of this. So we're basically going to put a any old building block on top of every observer and then a note block in the cracks uh, like this, obviously not up here, but all around like this. So we're just going to put a note block on here. We're going to hear the note blocks ding a bit too. We are basically just going to put normal blocks on here and note blocks like this. So I'll be right back once I've done all that.
All right, so we've now placed all the just generic blocks. I'm using netherrack and the note blocks. We only have one thing left to do. Actually, we have two things left to do. We have smooth stone slabs we have to place down, and we also have pistons we have to pay, place down. Now, you may be wondering what are the pistons for that seems to be working. Well, I'll tell you. Do you hear all those dings? Well, personally, I don't want to be hearing those um, everywhere I am in my world, or at least within this radius for the rest of the time I'm on this world. So uh, it's quite annoying. Obviously, these are just note blocks that actually make these dings. Uh, but what you can do to stop the dings is just put blocks on top of them. And also what this does is this spawn proofs the top of this. So unless these blocks you used were light blocks, which you wouldn't want to use anyway because um, that wouldn't be able to carry the redstone signal, then basically you want to put uh, slabs on top of here and to stop all those annoying dings. So the other thing you want to do is uh, when you're placing this, you may be finding you're trying to place it on here and it'll just change the note of the block. If you press shift when you're putting these, then that won't happen. So I'll place all these on top of here and they'll go on to the last step. Alright, so we're on the very last step now. All we have left to do is place in all these pistons. The rest of the farm is done. Of course, this is the most important part. And something we may run into uh, is a small issue. So what we're going to want to do first is get ourselves a crafting pl uh, table placed down here. Make ourselves some planks and make a trap door. Uh, this is really important because this is the way to get in and out. So what we're going to do is we're just going like this. So we can actually get in. We go like this. It makes us go down. What we're going to do is try and stay when we're crawling on top of these observers. And then place down uh, while shifting these... Um, oh, we can see that'll happen a lot. So uh, while we're shifting, we're going to be wanting to place down the the pistons here. Now, if you get stuck up in here, you can just break the observer and uh, rebuild that little bit and go again. But obviously, getting stuck isn't the best. So if you kind of stay in the edges between these blocks, and you shouldn't be uh, pushed up. So if you just hold shift while doing this, that'll work. Because again, I'm not holding shift here now, and I'm right clicking, nothing's happening. But if I hold shift, then it totally works. And again, I'm kind of staying in the cracks between here. Obviously, you want to be as quick with this as possible. Because the uh, longer you wait, the more pumpkins and melons that have already grown, you'll have to get rid of. Um, now, once we've done this as well, we actually also have to put some glowstone around the edge. Yeah, like, so like here, we want to break this and then put down that. So, of course, again, I got stuck. Uh, what we can do here, though, because of the light is we can get out this way. Let's see if we can get out this way. No, that's fine. So, what we can do is we can get ourselves our shovel and get out that way and then fly out. Uh, if you don't, let's see if we can do this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we can get out that way. Um, if you don't have a light what you can do is you can get with yourself some trap doors. And then with those trap doors, you can use those to get out if necessary. So we'll get rid of this. And again, stay in the cracks here. And I'll just move that over. Now, I broke the dirt, so I'm going to want to place the dirt back there. So I'll just place that there. And of course, place all this like this. Now, there's going to be a lot of signals that don't necessarily mean a pumpkin and melon has grown for now, um, as the pumpkins and melons do grow. So... Uh, that will have a lot of these pistons be pushed down even if there isn't a pumpkin and melon growing, but that shouldn't harm the system at all. So let's again go around like this. All right, so we've all the pistons in here and the pattern under here I think actually looks really cool. You can see the farm is totally working. We want to do now is we want to grab ourselves the glowstone and the two hopper mine carts. Now the hopper mine carts uh, we can put in now. What we're going to do is just calibrate them both to where they want to go. So we'll go like this and we can go like this and push it in and this and push it in so they're both going in there now and that should be totally set and then we're going to want to do is get ourselves our glowstone and put it in an entire ring right around the farm so we're going to start here and then go at uh, make it go all the way around here like this just in a big circle right around the edge like this and what this does is provides ample light to every single one of the crops because the big issue you can have with a farm like this is it's too dim inside of it now obviously if you're doing this very very large um, the glowstone in the center there on the center of the water might not be quite enough so you might want to actually add some extra little areas where there's nothing growing but there's more glowstone but for something the size I'm building which is substantially large uh, or any smaller you don't need to do that also, because of the size of this farm, now this may not seem like a crazy large farm, but this will actually produce as many pumpkins and melons as you would ever need in a single player, maybe even in a multiplayer world. It's that good. It's really, really an amazing, amazing farm design. And so we're going to go around like this. Uh, we can get rid of this since I don't think we're ever going to need to go in here again. And we can get rid of this. And we can go like that. And now the farm is finished, finally, which is awesome to see. 
All right, so our farm is done. We have all the glowstone in here. We have all these correctly loading up. You can see that is unloaded, then it's pushed off. This whole system's working. We can go down here and kind of see what kind of produce we're getting so far, uh, just in a little bit. Of course, if there's even one thing in here, that means it started to work. And it looks like it is starting to work. We'll put everything else we collected in there. And this farm is actually really, really efficient and quick. As long as it's running, I would say it'd be very, very quick to fill up all this because there's so many plants growing. Of course, it'll be slow right now because not all the plants have finished maturing to their full vine size. But once that's happened, it'll be even faster. And of course, I wouldn't recommend building a super, super close to where you live. Uh, but this, something like this is even fine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial on how to make a pumpkin and melon farm that's super fast and efficient. If you did, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you thought of this video, make sure to like the video, and make sure to subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!